Hi everybody, welcome to Nokri Learning. My name is Kanika Garg and I'm working in machine learning, deep learning, data science, etc. for past five years. We will be uh, building a recurrent neural network in this session using uh, Keras, our library in Python. These are uh, the two resources that we are going to use uh, today. First is the Google Colab. Uh, it is basically a collaboratory for uh, Python, Jupyter Notebook, and uh, we will work as uh, we will work on Google Colab um, and take it as an ID. Uh, the reason behind this is that it is uh, rather fast for GPU applications, and today we are going to implement RNN, which actually requires uh, GPU implementation. So if uh, our system has some limitation and uh, our systems are not fast enough, then we can always use Google Colab. The only requirement it has is that we need internet. Then uh, we are going to use Google stock price prediction data set from the Kaggle. And this is the link that you can follow. So uh, you can follow this link for the data set and get yourself ready for the hands-on session today that we are going to have today. So we are going to predict the stock prices or the opening prices uh, from the past data using recurrent neural network. So let's get started. Now, this is how the Google Collab look. Uh, I've already named it with Google stock prediction and I have uh, pre-written some code to just save us some time. Now, first, what we have to do is, of course, we have to import some uh, libraries. So initially, I'm importing uh, NumPy for linear algebra, Pandas for data processing or the data frames, Matplotlib for plotting a graph or something in the Python. Now, for that, first, we have to uh, upload our data. Since our data can be in the local machine or it can be in the Google Drive, so it has a facility to directly import our data from the Google Drive. So let's run this cell. You can run the cell from here or you can just press shift and enter. So this cell is already done. Now, what I have to do is I have to mount my Google Drive so that I can access the data from the Google Drive directly. So with this option, you can permit the Google Drive to get linked with your Google Colab. So it will take a little time. See, our drive has been mounted here. Now from here, I can just search my data and can easily use the data set that I want. Now I have to use this train set.csv. What I can do is I can from here just copy the path and save it here. So let's run this cell. Okay, it's successful. Then let's just see whether we got the data. Yes, we got the data. And if you can see here, we got date, open, high, low, close, adjacent close, and volume. Now, these are all the details that we have for our stocks. That is the open price, the highest price, the lowest price, the closing price, the adjacent price, uh, close price, and the volume of trade. So these are the information available with us to process. What we are going to do exactly is we are going to take only two columns here, date and open, because we want to predict our next open price. So uh, in that case, for training set, I'm just using these two columns, uh, using this iLock, and I'm using date and open. Now, if you can see here, I can, I have taken all the rows for the first two columns. Uh, let's just see what we have in train set then. Now you see here, we only have the data for the first column that you can match the values that we have all the values of the open here. Now, now we got the uh, training set, but what we have to do is we have to scale our features. Why? Because it might be possible that the range of these values may vary greatly. So we what we want is we want to uh, reshape them or say scale them in the range in some range that can be easily used with the machine so we are ranging them in the range of zero and one using min max scalar 
For that, we are using the library of uh, sklearn, scikit-learn, and pre-processing using minmax scalar. So if we run this, let's see. And we can just see that our features have been scaled in the values between 0 and 1. All right. Now, if you see, we are now declaring two variables, x train and y train, because we want to have these two values along with us. But now, what we are doing is, uh, as we know that in RNN, we have time steps. And uh, we declare those time steps according to us. So we can change those time steps to see what uh, result how the result changes with the time steps and one output. So uh, we are just creating a data structures with 60 time steps here. Okay. So let's just say, uh, see the shape of the x train finally here. We have total this these values with 60 time steps. Reshape this, why we are re reshaping this? Uh, the most common reason to reshape is that it allows uh, to reshape an array in Python. And it basically means changing the shape of an array. And uh, the shape of an array is determined the number of elements in each dimension. It allows us to add or say remove dimensions from the array. So we are just reshaping it. Finally, when our data is like ready to get into the model, now there is a time to create a model. To create a model, uh, we are using Keras uh, to create a RNN. And in this particular example, we are using LSTM for RNN, that is long short-term memory model. So here we need to uh, import sequential, dense, LSTM, and dropout. These are the four kind of layers that we are going to use in this. So we are importing all these four. Now, first, what we have to do is, um, first, we have to initialize a, a recurrent neural network. And then we have to add the first LSTM layer and then some dropout regularizations. So uh, this is how we do it. First, we will just initialize our regressor. And then we add the LSTM layer. After running, running this, okay, sorry, I just forgot to run this cell. Okay, now let's just run it again. Now we are just adding a dropout layer. Okay, what exactly dropout layer doing here is, dropout is a regularization method where uh, input and the recurrent connections to LSTM units are maybe, uh, excluded from activation and uh, wait updates while training a network. So this has the effect of say reducing the overfitting and it uh, basically helps in improving the model performance. Okay, then uh, what we are doing is we are adding the second LSTM layer and uh, a dropout layer again. Then again, third, fourth, so here we have added four LSTM layers and dropout layers, as you can see. Finally, we are adding the dense layer. What exactly the dense layer is? It is normally a fully connected uh, layer in the neural network. So let's just try and run this. OK. Now, finally, when we have created the outer model of the RNN, we have to compile our uh, model, or say regressor, so for that, we are using the Adam optimizer and uh, for loss, we are using mean squared error. Why we have used uh, Adam? Because uh, it, it is an algorithm for optimization technique for the gradient descent. And uh, this is actually light and it is easy to run. And in these environments, when we are just testing, uh, it is quite uh, quick to do work with it. So it is basically adaptive uh, moment estimation and uh, it can be implemented in various deep learning applications uh, that can vary from computer vision to say natural language processing in the future years. We can also try the other uh, optimizers such as uh, stochastic, uh, stochastic gradient descent, Adagrad, anything. So what you can do is instead of using the Adam, just try out the other uh, optimizers and see how the result changes. Then finally, we are using mean squared error for losses. The purpose of the loss function is basically to compute the uh, quantity that a model should seek 
to uh, minimize uh, during the training because every time we train we try to minimize the loss so to uh, for the loss function here we are using mean square error the other regression losses you can use it could be uh, cosine similarity it could be it could be uh, mean absolute error instead of the mean square error so again you can just i have chose it to be mean square error you can choose other things and just see how the result goes okay. now finally we have compiled it the last step is to fit our model so for that i am passing the training data uh for x and the y variables and the epochs here i have taken 100 you can initially start with 10 because hundreds will gonna take some time and my batch size is 32 so i'm compiling them in the size of 32 so here i'll take some pause so that the epochs will get complete and now it's already been uh, three minutes and you can just see the epochs have reached 34 so it will take a while uh, like five to maybe 10 minutes now that depends on your internet connection also so just give it some time and it will uh, reach the 100 epochs now we have reached the 100 epochs so our uh, training is completed now to test our data again, we need to load our test data. To Again, to lo load our test data, let's just copy the path from here. And we can just put it here. Okay. Fine. Again, the same value, open market. what here what we have done is we have just concatenated the data set from the training and the testing to have the total values then we just want to know the length of the input that we are going to take after removing out those 60 values then again finally we are just reshaping it Now, uh, these are all the steps for exploratory data analysis part and the data transformation part. Finally, we just have shaped our data uh, and our text data looks like this. One, uh, 25 are the total number of entries, 60, because we have taken the time steps as 60. And finally, we have one output. So to predict our price, what we are going to do is we are going to feed this X test data to a regressor that we just have trained with the function predict. So let's try run this. Okay, so in the predicted price, we have the values. Since we have transformed our data uh, here, we have just transformed our data using the uh, transformation function. So we have to inverse transform again to see the actual price. So to see that actual price, see we have got the predicted values here. These are shown as the actual values. Otherwise we could have got the values between minus one to one. So uh, to get the values again in the actual form, we just have to uh, inverse transform them. Now we can just analyze our data by plotting them on the graph. So we'll plot the actual price, that is the real price and the predicted price on the graph so that we can just see how uh, or how near the predicted price is to the real price. So we are using uh, matplotlib to plot a graph here. So let's run. Now, if you can see, this is how our prediction looks. Okay, so the real price is shown in the red, whereas the uh, predicted price that we the model has predicted or we have predicted is in blue. Now, if you can see, it is not too far from the actual uh, or the real price. Where there is an increase, it is also an increase in the predicted price. Where there is a decrease, there is a decrease in the predicted price as well. Though there are certain differences like the peak going here is really down in the real price. And whereas uh, here in blue, the values are real a little up 
in comparison to the real prices. But as we can see, uh, the model tried to map uh, the predicted price to the real price here, and it is almost similar. The graph is almost similar that we got. So this is uh, basically how our output looks. So to finally, you know, to actually know how our output was, we can use uh, the regressive analysis part or result analysis for the regression. Uh, for, uh, I guess, uh, for this course, I can sum up here that we can use this graph to see how near our results be with the uh, real prices. So let's move on to the courses. Now, these are some of the courses uh, that are recommended uh, for the hands-on sessions or to learn more about recurrent neural networks. Uh, if you see, these courses are provided by the Coursera and Udemy. So these are quite lengthy. So I just have given a quick overview of how things work or how we can code using Python libraries like Keras in um, uh, Jupyter Notebook. So you can just try out these courses and see how they take you further. So these are very intensive courses. I think they will help you learn more about uh, CNNs and RNNs and the deep learning algorithms. Finally, uh, thank you. Uh, if you like the video, please uh, like, share, and subscribe to no uh, Nokri Learning. And finally, thank you. Bye-bye.